Um, are we filming? Yes, we are. Okay, so hi, my name is Ellen New. I'm a first year psychobio major at UCLA. And this is going to be my very first lecture vlog. And this lecture is going to be for, uh, well, it's going to cover Chem 14C with Hardinger. Uh, this is the lecture supplement we use. And I'm going to cover lecture 6, which is the beginning of stereochemistry. So, bear with me, I'm not a pro at this, this is just to kind of help me learn and hopefully help you guys learn too. So stereochemistry, what is it? Well, you gotta really start off with the basics before you can actually get into what stereochemistry actually is. And in order to do that, you need to know what an isomer is. So basically, according to his lecture, isomers are molecules with the same chemical formula but different spatial arrangement of atoms. So basically when you write it out with the, all the letters and like the little sub numbers, it's the same, but when you draw them, the structures are different. Those are isomers. Constitutional isomers are isomers that difference in the sequence of atom connectivity. So they all have the same number of atoms. Say they have like all have four carbons, eight hydrogens, two oxygens, a nitrogen. They all have the same same makeup except except that they are all attached differently. So that is what a constitutional isomer is. Another type of isomer is the conformational isomer. So basically the same there's a same sequence of connectivity, but it can be interconverted by rotation around a single bond. And a really good example of what a constitutional isomer is is if you look at molecules that can be cis and trans. So cis, just to review, is when um, attachments on the double bond, the two largest, or like two to have the highest priority on the same side of the double bond. Whereas trans is that they are on the opposite side of the double bond. So like cis molecules, they look like this. They look like this this, or in trans, they look more along the lines of this, so it's cis and trans. Oh, it's all backwards. <laughs> okay, cis and trans. So that's a conformational isomer. Um, so now he gets into, like, stuff that are more specific that when it comes to uh, stereochemistry. So then on the next page, he starts talking about light. So he talks about plain polarized light. So say you you shine a light beam through like a crystal, and the light is diffracted except for one plane. That one plane is the plain polarized light. So like if you look at a light beam, it's kind of thought of like as an infinite number of planes of vibrations. But when you isolate one, that one vibrational plane is called plane polarized light. And this is gonna come in like later. I'll talk about it a bit later. Um so when it when it comes to that plane, if it's optically say say something something's optically active if it rotates the, if the plane of polarized light is rotated by it like say if you shine something through this uh, molecule if the plane of plane of polarized light is rotated then it's optically active if it's not rotated then it's optically inactive so I kind of want to just skip ahead and talk about okay so now we're getting into stereochemistry so stereo center as an atom bury three or more different attachments whose exchange leads to stereoisomers. So say you have a central carbon, it's a central carbon that has four different things attached to it. Okay. That's it. So that's basically what it is. Um another definition that we should probably know is superposable. Superposable Something's not superposable means that like they're mirror images, so your hands. And that's it.